to secede from the Union. He had served many years in the United States Army as an engineer. Many of you are well aware of that. But his old world view was causing him to be faithful to the Commonwealth of Virginia, a strong state government. Did you realize he was only 56 at the time of the Battle of Gettysburg in 1863? Have you seen photographs of the gentleman? He looks 76. Can you imagine being in his shoes? Some of his staff suggested guerrilla tactics just prior to his surrender to General Grant in April of 1865. He rejected that. He surrendered to Grant and endured restoration of the Union. However, <clears throat> as Reconstruction began and the South was ravaged, he rued his actions at Appomattox Courthouse. He died in the year of our Lord, 1870, at only 63 years of age. They perform at his funeral. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for his faith in his excellent word. General Stonewall Jackson, he didn't like the nickname being used in his direction. He felt like it belonged to his brigade. But General Thomas Jonathan Stonewall Jackson was the heart of the Confederacy, a devout believer. He was never really gave any comments on slavery, but I've talked about how he did many things to further the opportunity of the people of the African race. His loyalty was firmly with Virginia. Its will was superior to his own. He, he saw himself as an army of God fighting against the evils of an invasion of a, a sovereign state. Some say that the Confederacy really died in May of 1863 when old Stonewall rested neath the shade of the trees. He was already gone by Gettysburg. Very quickly, I, I'll end I'll end with these thoughts. If the South is racist and the North is the victorious soldier of morality, why were the black men, once they were allowed into the United States Army, why were they segregated? Why were they forced to fight in their own regiments underneath only white officers? They did allow black men to become NCOs. You military people know what that would be, right? But they also work at a reduced rate of pay. Now, I can really make some people mad with this, but according to contemporary records, from civilian witnesses in 1862, a full 10% of the Army of Northern Virginia, don't let that term fool you, that, that is the, the main Confederate army. That Northern word in there throws a lot of people off. This was General Robert E. Lee's army. A full 10% of the Army of Northern Virginia was made up of black men, and they received equal pay with their white brethren. The Confederate Constitution said, don't let black men in. Well, they were saying the same thing the United States was saying at the same time. But the state government said, no, let the black men fight in our armies, and we're not going to segregate them either. They're going to fight right in line with their white brethren, their Native American brethren. Did you know that 13 Native American tribes sided with the Confederacy because of the broken treaties from the United States government? People of Latin American descent fought in the Confederacy, and I realized they fought also on the northern side. Folks, this was not a war of racism. This was a disagreement about the Constitution, about taxes, really and truly about civil rights. I don't like to call it civil war because a civil war is a struggle over which group is going to control one government? We wanted to secede and form our own. Okay? I, I will say this in closing. When you see the Southern Cross, we talked about stars a little bit. We never quite made it to 13. We had 11. But the X-shaped cross is a very significant symbol of Christianity. It is the cross of St. Andrew. When you read the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the Holy Scriptures, the first apostle mentioned is always 
Simon Peter. All right? My studies have shown me that Simon Peter was probably the oldest of the apostles. A young man, perhaps in his early 20s, Jesus Christ, according to human years, being between the ages of 30 and 33, and the other apostles were probably older teens. If you were a Jewish man in ancient times, well, even now, they have a bar mitzvah at age 13. If you were 16, 17 years old, you were building a room on, I'm going to start preaching here in a minute, you build a room on to your daddy's house and preparing to take a bride. I call Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, the first apostle. You know why? It was he who brought Simon Peter to Jesus. What did Jesus say to Peter? You're Peter, and upon your confession of who I am, I will build my church. But had Andrew not been faithful to bring his brother to meet the Messiah, none of that would have ever happened. Church history and tradition tells us that the apostle Andrew was martyred on an x shape cross. People look at this and they say, redneck, racist, you're horrible. Let's abolish that. Have you ever seen, here, where is that thing? Dwayne mentioned a while ago. Have you ever seen that one? That is the cross of Burgundy. It flies over the Castillo. Do I have it right? Word for castle. <laughs> Castillo in St. Augustine. It is the rugged cross. See the barbs on it? It is the rugged cross of St. Andrew. <coughs> How many people have heritage that goes back to this here flag? Yep. Yeah. Now this is this is from the 1700s period. It doesn't have the cross of St. Patrick, but we have the flag of England merged with the flag of Scotland. All right, the blue rectangle with the white X-shaped cross of St. Andrew is the flag of Scotland. My surname Giffen was originally McGiffen from Scotland. All right, don't call me Griffin. I'm not Irish. I'm quite Scotch over here. But there are a lot of Irish people also named Giffen. I've come to find out. The white flag of England with the red cross of St. George, the patron saint of England, mixed today with the red X-shaped cross of St. Patrick makes up the Union Jack. This, is, this was from the War of Independence period. So we were using the cross of St. Andrew because there were many Southern people that were of English, Scotch, and even Irish ancestry. Folks, if I have said anything that you disagree with, please feel free to, to research this topic for yourself. By the way, warring factions can go to war for different reasons. Some of those folks in that Union Army said, I want to set the slaves free, and that was their view of it. Okay? But we were not intended to be a nation of people under tyranny. And my Confederate ancestors, who wore the butternut and the gray, if you don't know what butternut is, I'll fill you on that later if you want to come ask me, fought because they believed in strong states' rights. I will continue to pledge my allegiance to old glory. We had a beautiful sight at Millennial Christian School on Friday. You remember? Do you remember where you were on September 11th? 2001? Oh, I do. I wasn't around for President Kennedy's assassination, but I can never forget 9-11. We had our entire student body. We have about 108 young people in our school, and we sang my country tis of thee because the national anthem is too high to sing. But we sang <laughs> my country tis of thee, and we pledged our allegiance, and we had a moment of silence. We had a moment of prayer. I pledge my allegiance the United States, but I love dear old Dixieland, and it hurts my heart 